I'm gonna make us each two crab cakes. Oops. I'm just gonna cook those. You good, Pluto? Welcome to my channel. I'm Nikki and today's video I'm going to be sharing some lower point quick and easy dinner recipes. So if you enjoyed this video or find it helpful please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it and let's go ahead and get started with the first dinner that I'm going to be sharing which is going to be sour cream enchiladas and I'm so excited to make this. I don't know why I haven't done this one yet. What I'm doing is I'm going off of a recipe that I used to make all the time that's a much higher point recipe and I'm just making adjustments to make it lightened up. So it's gonna come out to be four points per enchilada. So for two of them, it'll be eight points, which I think will be the perfect serving with a side of like veggies or rice or something. But I am excited to get these made because it's something that we actually recently made in Florida. If you guys saw my Florida vlog when it was our night to make dinner, we did enchiladas and it's gonna be similar to that recipe. But like I said, it's just much lower in points. And I'm realizing how high in points it actually was as I'm trying to make adjustments to make it less points. So the tortillas that I'm gonna be using for the enchiladas today are these La Banderita low carb tortillas. There are eight in a pack. So I've got two packs here because I'm gonna be making 10 enchiladas. So I need 10 tortillas. Then I'm gonna be cooking up some chicken. So I've got some chicken breast that I'm gonna cook up. This is probably gonna be too much. So I think I'll just take the extra and use it as like shredded taco chicken. But if it isn't too much, I might just make these higher in protein and add a lot of chicken to them. But we'll see how it is when we get there. I'm just gonna cook up the chicken and shred it using my KitchenAid. I'm gonna be using some cheese for this. So I've got some reduced fat Fiesta blend and mozzarella cheese. I'm gonna use a cup of this and a half cup of the mozzarella. Some of it goes into the enchiladas and then some of it is used to top them. Then we're gonna be making a sour cream sauce. I start with some butter and cornstarch and I'm just gonna whisk that together. Then I'm gonna use two cups of this low sodium chicken broth and add that to it and also some garlic. And you just cook that until it starts to thicken and then you add the sour cream. So I'm gonna be doing a half cup of this light sour cream and then a half cup of whipped fat-free cottage cheese. So I'm just gonna use my blender cup and whip that up. I might whip it with the sour cream so it blends better, but that'll be in addition to the broth and stuff when I'm making the sauce. I'm also gonna use some seasoning, so some garlic powder, onion powder, and cumin. And then I'm gonna chop up a fresh jalapeno from the garden to add it to the sauce as well. So I'm gonna add the chicken and the cheese to the tortillas, wrap them up, you top it with the sauce and put them in the oven. And then that is it. And I'm so excited to use my Ikea dish that I recently got. So I feel like this will be perfect to fit 10 enchiladas and that's what I'm gonna be doing tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with these. I still need to calculate the protein and calories for them, but I'll have the recipes typed out in the description with points and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on these enchiladas. Adam's gonna be so excited when he gets home because these are one of his favorite meals as well. And I'm hoping the lightened up version is just as good. So we will see. I decided to mix the half cup of sour cream with the half cup of cottage cheese in the blender cup just so there was more and it blended a little bit easier. It was funny because when we made this as our dinner for Florida for Adam's family, we didn't have a KitchenAid at the house we were staying at, so we had to shred the chicken by hand using forks the way that we used to always do it before I started using my mixer, and it definitely made me appreciate having my mixer at home. It makes it so much easier, saves your hands, and saves a lot of time.
Then to the sauce, usually you add some cumin, but I didn't have any, so I just used some taco seasoning, then some garlic powder, and some minced onion. I don't usually let the sauce cool down before adding the sour cream when I make this normal recipe, but because I added the cottage cheese to it today, I decided to wait just a little bit to let it cool down a little, and then when I added the cottage cheese sour cream mixture, I just made sure to whisk out any lumps that there were, and I think I got most of them. There were some left when I poured the sauce on, but they seemed to bake out as I baked this in the oven. Okay, so the chicken enchiladas are done. I have two here for eight points. One is four points on Weight Watchers. And then I also made some Spanish style rice. So I have a three point serving of rice here, which this recipe is in my cookbook. But I'm gonna go ahead and eat this. It's 11 points and I'm so excited. Adam, do you wanna try it? Yes. Okay. This looks crazy. It's really hot. It looks crazy. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Those don't taste different at all. <laughs> they taste really similar, honestly. The cottage cheese worked well. Yeah. I feel like it all melted out because I was nervous. I saw a few chunks in there when I mixed it with the broth and stuff, but I feel like it melted out well. I think I could have put more garlic. I don't know if I put enough garlic. Mm. And I wish that the jalapenos had more of a kick to them, but they do add good flavor. Yeah. So this is really good. And I did calculate the regular recipe that we do, and it's 11 points for one enchilada. That's and this insane. is four. That's so insane. I feel like it tastes pretty similar. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think the sauce is a little bit liquidier, but... Mm. I kind of like it like that. Thanks. And I feel like you could do a little bit less broth and it would work fine if you didn't want it on the liquidy side like this, but yeah. I feel like it makes a good dipping sauce. Yes. Okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and eat. Bye. We're and I'll be back this. with the next dinner. <laughs> You're excited. <laughs> Okay, we are moving on to the second dinner that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys. And today we are making tuna cakes with a pretty simple rice pilaf that I'm gonna be making as the side. So I went ahead and already tracked all this. It's gonna be 10 points for the serving and Weight Watchers. With this, I'm gonna be getting two tuna cakes. And with the rice recipe, I'm gonna be getting four servings of rice. So this is for one serving of tuna cakes and then one serving of the rice. And I'm gonna go ahead and walk through how I'm gonna be making them. So we actually already have three cans of tuna open here. and strained out. I'm going to use a paper towel and soak up more of the liquid just so that it's not too much for the cakes to form. But to that, I'm going to add two eggs. I'm going to add some Parmesan cheese. So I'm going to do two tablespoons of this. Then I'm going to do two tablespoons of light mayo. I'm also going to add a tablespoon of this mustard and I'm going to decide if I want to do one or two tablespoons, but I think one will be enough. I'm also going to chop up some chives that I grabbed from the garden and add those in there. Some garlic, some salt and pepper. And then I'm going to add a half cup of panko breadcrumbs. I'm gonna form that into patties. I'm gonna see how much it makes. If I'm gonna make us each two tuna cakes, I think that's what I'll try to do. But I'm just gonna cook those in a frying pan on the stove. And then I'm also gonna start the rice on the stove. So to do that, I'm gonna heat up a tablespoon of olive oil. Then I'm gonna add some jalapeno because I wanna add that to the rice today. I'm also gonna add some garlic and just cook that up for a little bit. Then you add the uncooked rice and you cook it for a few minutes and just stir it constantly while it's cooking and then you add some chicken broth so i'm going to add two cups of chicken broth i'm doing one cup of rice and today i'm just going to use jasmine rice because that's what i have and i have a small bag that i'm just going to finish off so i'm going to do a cup of that and then once i add the broth in i cover it and let it cook for about 15 minutes i'm also just going to add some garlic and salt and pepper and stuff to that to season it but that kind of just cooks on its own oh and i am going to add some onion to it so i'll do jalapeno and onion and garlic and cook that up with the oil and then add the rice. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get started probably on the rice first because I think the tuna cakes will be much quicker to throw together, but I'm gonna get the rice cooking and then start the tuna cakes. I made sure to preheat my griddle before I started cooking the tuna cakes and I sprayed it with some nonstick olive oil spray. Then you can see when I put the cakes on the griddle, I kind of wipe around to get the extra oil because if I don't, sometimes it starts to burn, which was what was going to happen to my rice if I didn't stir it. I probably should have stirred it sooner, but mixing it all together, it ended up being fine. It did just make it a little extra crispy. Okay, so the dinner is done. You can see that the tuna cakes are actually pretty big in size. So for one of these, it's only two points on Weight Watchers. Two of them is four points. Then the serving of rice that I have underneath is six points on Weight Watchers. I already tried it when I was cooking it. It did get a little stuck to the pan. Not really stuck, but like it cooked too much. I probably should have stirred it at least once while it was simmering, but I tried a bite after I mixed it all together and it's really good. It's got a little bit of a crunch to it from it, but it kind of tastes like hibachi fried rice, but with jalapenos and onions. So I'm super excited to eat this. I can't decide which sauce I want. You could do like a zero point sauce made with Greek yogurt if you wanted to do that. I'm debating doing the Kinder's Japanese barbecue, or I was thinking about doing like a ranch, like everything seasoned ranch. So I'll probably just do a drizzle of sauce on top of this, but that is gonna be my dinner for 10 points, and I will be back with the next one. Okay, we are on to our third dinner that we're doing, and I'm so excited for this one. It's a little bit inspired off of a potbelly sandwich that I used to really enjoy, and it is going to be a Mediterranean pizza flatbread. So I'm gonna be making a two ingredient dough crust like I usually do, but I'm gonna be using whole wheat flour. So this is just lower in points and I like the taste that it has a little bit more of a nuttiness to it. And I like that it's lower in points, but I add some baking powder to this and some seasoning and then a cup of non-fat plain Greek yogurt. I've got one and a third cup of whole wheat flour in there right now. So I'm gonna mix that together and make two separate crusts, one pizza for me, one for Adam. And I'm gonna go ahead and par bake the crust. I think I'm gonna do a little longer than normal though because the toppings don't need to cook as long. So I'm gonna bake it for 15 minutes at 400. Then I'm gonna take the pizza crust out, flip them over, and add all the toppings. So the toppings that I'm gonna be adding are going to be hummus. I'm gonna use that as the sauce. I've got some roasted garlic hummus here. It's from Walmart, so it's just the market side brand, and this is the roasted garlic flavor. I'm definitely gonna need to mix it all together, but I think I'm gonna do two tablespoons for two points on each pizza, spread that out. Then I'm gonna be adding some blackened chicken. So while the crust is cooking, I'm gonna start this in the air fryer just so it's not fully frozen, but then I'm gonna cut it up and add it to the pizza. This is zero points on Weight Watchers. It's pretty spicy, but it adds really good flavor. I'm also gonna add some artichoke hearts, some roasted red peppers, and some feta cheese, and then I'm gonna pop them back in the oven and bake them. So I'll give you guys the point breakdown after I, I assemble them, but I'm gonna get the crust started baking in the oven and the chicken cooking in the air fryer and then this will be really quick and easy to assemble once that's done. I 
I used to try to flatten it out using my hands and I found using a mini rolling pin like this really does make a difference and saves me some time. And I usually just use this one which is actually an old fondant roller I used to have. It's just the perfect size whenever I make two ingredient dough like this. I like to place the roasted red peppers and the artichoke hearts onto a paper towel to get some of the liquid out so that it doesn't have too much liquid that it adds to the flatbread. So the Mediterranean style flatbread pizza bake thing is done. I ended up baking it for another 15 minutes and I did 15 minutes for the crust alone. So 30 minutes total for this. I find with the whole wheat flour, it does bake a little bit longer. But anyway, I've got this tracked and it's 10 points in Weight Watchers. It is six points for the crust, two for the feta and two for the hummus that I used. The artichokes and roasted red peppers are zero points and so is the blackened chicken. So that is my whole flatbread and this is a big serving for 10 points as well. This plate is really big. So I'm excited to eat this. It would also be good with any type of sauce. I feel like I might add a little bit of hot sauce and I know Adam will, but I will be back with the next dinner. Okay, so we are on to the fourth dinner that I'm gonna be making and tonight I am making something that I've had in my pantry for a while and I've been wanting to use up and that is some gnocchi. So we always love gnocchi. It's something that I buy and again, it just like sits in my pantry and I forget to make it. But this one we're gonna be having today is actually a plant-based chickpea gnocchi. And what I'm gonna be adding to this gnocchi today is gonna be some spinach and jalapenos because I've just been kind of craving that combination with a little bit of cheese. So I'm gonna use some laughing cow. These are the garlic and herb wedges and I'm gonna be using three of them. Today with this package of gnocchi, I'm gonna be getting three servings. So there are actually three servings in here. It has three cups and I'm gonna go ahead and just divide it into three equal portions once it's all done and cooked. I'm gonna start by cooking some bacon first. I'm gonna do five slices of center cut bacon and I'm just gonna use some kitchen scissors and cut it up into small pieces and then cook it up on the stove. Once it's pretty much cooked, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some spinach, some diced jalapenos and some garlic. And I'm just gonna cook that for a little bit. Then I'm gonna add in some chicken broth as well as a half cup of this Fairlife fat-free milk. That's when I'll add in the laughing cow wedges to melt. And then I'm also gonna add a serving of light mozzarella cheese for two points. I went ahead and created it as a recipe and then made three servings. So for one serving, it's nine points. Like I said, I'm gonna start with cooking up the bacon, add the veggies, and then it'll go pretty quick after that. The gnocchi shouldn't take too long to heat up. And I'm just gonna cook it all in one pan on the stove. Everything's gonna be in one and I'm just gonna cover it once I start cooking the gnocchi. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started.
Okay, so here is one serving of the gnocchi. I have one in a leftover container, and then I've also got Adam's portion over here. So we're really excited to have this for dinner tonight. It's nine points total for this serving. So in my fitness pal, I went ahead and tracked it, and it's got 335 calories and 22 grams of protein. So you could even add some chicken or chicken sausage or something like this to add even more protein if you wanted to, but that wraps up dinner number four. I'll have the recipes typed out in the description, and I hope you guys try these out and let me know what you think of them. I always have fun doing different types of dinners like this, and a lot of these I've just had in my mind that I've wanted to make for a while now, and I finally just did it, and we've been happy with all of them. So. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.